Okay. Good. Good, good, good. All right, so I'm, I am going to Facebook right now to get you guys tagged in. I can't do it. I want to do it. Because I know she didn't help me. That was yesterday. That was yesterday. It's, she a, new, it's a new day. Devin. But she, she still she still didn't even do it. Why don't you work on your project while I'm doing this? Right. Of course, I would have, of course, much rather have been there when you performed doing your, your interview, but we didn't get a chance to do that. So this is just as good. We're going to work it out. I'm going to get live one day. Yeah, we definitely My computer is really slow, so. Um, hello everybody, this is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. I am setting up the guys now to join us live here on Facebook so that you can see the whole interview. My computer is really slow, so bear with me while I'm trying to do that. We have about seven minutes until we get started. All right, let me go in here and tag you guys now. Kevin and Devin. All right, Jay, we're just waiting for James to come back on. Um, now, while you're in here, you just let your Facebook just go because if you go out to go to your Facebook, it's going to kick you out of the video. You're, gonna, you're not going to be on screen anymore if you try to go to your Facebook. Okay, just waiting for James. We have about four minutes. <laughs> Do you have a busy day today, Mr. James? I mean, Mr. J. Uh, mm. Y'all's names are too close. J. James. <laughs> Did you have a good day today, Mr. J? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you. <laughs>
Got it. Yes, my daughter was. My daughter was. Uh huh. Okay, so just FYI, there's like a lag. So when you are finished with a statement, then that's when I know that I can I can jump in there um, because there's kind of a lag. So I don't want to over talk to you. So when you just finish with the statement, just stop. And that way I'll know that you're done. All right. I'm waiting for James. Where'd he go? Hello, everybody. I see you watching. We will be ready in about three minutes. We are just waiting for JT to get on with us. I'm going to call James, make sure that something didn't happen. Give me a second. All right, we're ready. Hello, this is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And we are here today with Mr. J. Locke and Mr. James J.T. Thompson. Um, J. Locke is a musician. He is also an entrepreneur. He is a businessman. He's also an advocate in the community. We also have Mr. James J.T. Thompson. He is the founder of 
Big Woo Entertainment, and he is also an advocate in the community. Um, he has been very, very supportive of me on the Speak Up and Inspire series and also on my journey as a writer. Um, he's also been very supportive of Butterfly Visions Project and the mission that we do when it comes to helping victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. So it is only fitting for me to have him on the Speak Up and Inspire series. And he introduced me to Mr. J. Locke. So I have them on together so that we can talk to them about how they use what they do, their entertainment, their music, and everything that is that, they, that these guys do to not only um, be, be business owners, to support other musicians, to support other artists, but also to help causes like the one that, um, that I lead for domestic violence and sexual assault. So we're gonna go ahead and bring them on right now. Mr. JT and Mr. J. Locke. Hello guys, hello guys. What's up? How are you? All right. So I am going to take myself. Jay, can you hear me? I can. Okay, all right. Um, JT, for some reason, I can't get you on, but I'm working on that right now. So, Mr. Locke, tell us about you. Um, I know that when I was introduced to you by JT, he told me that you were a musician. So, tell me a little bit about you. How did you start off in the industry? I think I started out like most people in the South as far as music. I started out in church. I was a drummer. And um, not too soon after that, I got into hip hop and put up the drumsticks and picked up the microphone and got some wages, you know, kind of built that. Um, worked with a group called Grassroots Organization. And um, I've been rapping ever since. Now I'm more so into the writing, producing aspect of it. Um, I do have a live band as well, so going on tour this year. Oh, so I'm excited about that. It's like a 20 city tour. So, That's very nice. That's, so do you play any instruments or anything? I play drums, but I'm rusty. I'm more so into the writing and producing now more so than any. Okay. Okay. All right. So you said you started out with whom? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that part. Grassroots organization. Grassroots okay. is a um, collective of MCs, businessmen, poets, singers, songwriters, musicians, producers. Um, we all kind of was founded around East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina, and we also was connected with um, California. We had a chapter in Cali, and we also eventually had a chapter in Philadelphia as well. It's pretty deep. Okay. So when you started with the grassroots, were you singing? Were you playing an instrument? What was your part in it when you first started out? I was I was freestyling, to be very oh, wow. direct. Okay. I was a freestyle <laughs> artist. Yeah. Okay. And, um, recorded my first song 
um, and have been making songs ever since. Nice. I, nice. I used to do hour long I concerts. concerts. <laughs> Many moons ago. technical difficulties over here. I just got a text from um, from Spectrum that we're having internet issues. <laughs> so just keep talking, keep telling us about you. Um, I know that you just started a hair, a hair care line. Tell us about Alpha. Alpha is my new baby. I'm excited about it. Um, we started um, end of the year mm -hmm. of 2019. And um, we started with the beard serum, and in the first week we sold out. Um, we were shipping from Philadelphia to Charlotte to Atlanta, Georgia, and um, completely blown away with the, the outcome of that brand. And um, since then, we've grown. We've added about four new products. Um, the beard balm, the shampoo and conditioner, as well as a wave curl butter, and also a cologne and fragrance. So, since okay. like November, we've grown substantially. I've been watching your group because I'm in your group on Facebook and I've been seeing all of the posts. Um, I know that you have a Valentine special going on right now. Can you tell us about the Valentine special? So we wanted to do something for the guys who have the beards, um, for those guys that's trying to grow it, for those guys that already have it. Um, I wanted to give a package together, put a package together so that people that love the fragrance, really serious about their big game, we could kind of really impact them. So um, we have the big serum, we have the big balm, the shampoo and conditioner in one gift set, which I'm excited of, I'm excited about because what everybody is gravitating to with this product is the fragrance that we added to it. Not only does it smell good, but it also does work. So I'm excited. Um, I just saw a guy who bought um, the beard serum, I think it was like last month, um, last week, and his beard has grown like ridiculous. It was amazing. And he was going back to the store to get um, the beard bomb because he was he uses it every day. So he's trying to save some of the serum, kind of switch back and forth. So we get feedback from the professionals about how the people are responding to the product and how um, they have started to use it in their day-to-day -day with their clients and customers. Okay, so can you get it in a store right now or is it all online? Because it sounds like you can, I can go somewhere and get it. We are working on putting it in as many stores as we can. Currently, we have it in some barbershops, some beauty salons. Um, there's one beauty world that does carry it. Um, this year, I plan on expanding a lot and putting putting them in stores. Right now, you can get it offline from me. Um, you can call me directly. We do ship. Or you can hit me up on the Facebook page. And um, yeah. Which is easier. We're about to um, we're about to um, really get into putting it on um, different online stores as well. It's like we, we, in a couple of months, we'll have it on Amazon. Um, so we're expanding. Wow, that I mean that is awesome. I just started seeing this the end of last year. 
So already you have it in barbershops. You have it online, because I've seen how you can order it online. I've also seen that um, you can get, get it on Facebook. I've been seeing the advertising. Now you have Valentine specials, and now you're trying to get it on Amazon. Yes. yes. Wow. OK. So you said that there were some different scents. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I am a beard stalker. So. <laughs> I love beards. So when I go out and I see a man with a nice beard, I'm instantly attracted to that man no matter what he looks like because I love beards. So I know one thing, when you hug a man and he's got a beard, I'm, I like to smell. I like to know what he smells like. Tell me about these scents. What kind of scents do you have going on? So, so our first um, fragrance that we have is called Carolina 44. Okay. And Women and men alike love this this fragrance. Um, okay. Guys are getting compliments. They're coming back and they're telling me um, I'm getting, you know, people talking about the fragrance as well. Okay. Um, you know, I wanted to do something. You, you, when you say that, when you name a product Alpha, there's a uh -huh. certain man that I have in mind for this product. It's very okay. confident, very stylish, very um, secure man. Okay. And so when you're going after that market, that market is, you know, they're very intelligent. They know what they like. Like, you know, you can't fool them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because these guys are sharp. So I wanted to create a product that could embody that name. So that okay. alpha men could feel like they are who they are when they wear my product, and I was lucky enough. I was, um, I was, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we nailed that as far as reaching the um, the goal. And um, okay. the guys that are buying my product is exactly the guys that I thought would buy the product. Like they get it. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so what about guys that don't? What about guys that don't have beards that are kind of beard jealous or beard envious? Envious. <laughs> what about those guys? Do you have something for guys that want to grow a beard but have not? That they don't have one yet. Do you have something that helps with growth? I would recommend the beard serum. Okay. Because you have a lot of guys who have. You know, like in certain areas, they don't grow as 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 well as the other parts. So, okay. um, I have the, the beard serum that does help with growth. There's a growth agent inside of it. Um, I also have a shampoo and conditioner, and I would say kind of just get into a regimen of washing your beard, um, conditioning your your beard, applying the serum, and kind of getting yourself in a routine and um. That should work. And for the guys who have no beard, um, like for me and myself, I curl my hair when I'm not wearing a hat, which is very rare because I'm a hat guy. Um, okay. But my, my curl and wave butter is for the guys who like to curl their hair, also for the wavers, which the wavers, if, if you if you know, you don't know, is just as big as the beard guy. Okay, tell, tell me more, because I don't know. <laughs> the guys, there's just as, 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 as powerful as us big gangs are. There are these wave guys, we call them wavers, who are just okay. as serious about their, their waves. Like, they got this thing called wave check, where if a guy's wearing a do-rag, somebody with waves can have him take his do-rag off to show his waves. Like, it's pretty intense, <laughs> game, believe it or not. Okay. So uh, okay. we wanted to do something for them. And um, so in, in, in the, the game has changed, because if, if you remember back in the days, we used to have, like, this really thick grease. Like, if yes. you have to be careful, you could break your finger trying to, dig your finger in it to get the juice out to apply 
to your skin. Right. So, um, now, come to find out, you know, you know, the game is so different now because now it's not just creatures of habit. Now people are applying logic and intelligence and, and, and changing up the game a lot. So now they wanted a lighter um, texture because the thicker grease was clogging up the pores and was stopping the growth. So now the whole wave thing is moving from the thicker, heavier grease to the more lighter, um, something that's not as abrasive and not as aggressive on your hair when you apply it. So, Right, okay. I, I'm excited to be on the curve of that. Like We're kind of getting that from the ground up. So. Okay, nice. I like it. I like it. Um, I want to get back to your music because that's how I initially met you. So sure. when it comes to your music, um, are you, what kind of music do you do, first of all? What genre of music are you? Tell us a little bit about that. I call the music that make hip gas. You call it what? And I'm sorry. Hip gas. Okay, got it. H-I-P, H-I-P-G-O-S-P. Okay. And it's a hybrid sound between hip hop Mm. Gospel with a hint of neo soul. I like it. Okay, tell me more. So, when I was making the Mr. and Mrs. album, which is out now on all digital outlets, plug, um, I was kind of at a crossroad because, you know, if you call it hip hop, then the gospel world wouldn't receive it. And would reject it. And if I call it gospel, then the hip hop world would receive it and would reject it. So right. I decided to merge the two, and at least we can have the discussion. At least that doesn't turn you off just because of a title. Now you want to hear it and see how we blended the sound. And um, we created our own lane, so I didn't have any restriction. I was able to just create freely because. I didn't have any of those restrictions that were with hip hop or with gospel. Now in 2020, the slang and the lingo in rap music is kind of has a gospel tone to it. Like they're saying church and lessons and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting, but um, they're kind of confusing it a little bit because they're still talking about sweet stuff while they're talking about why they're using our words of faith. Got it. Okay. So when what was uh, what um, when it comes to music, now see I don't know I don't know all the language. All I know is that when I turn on the radio I hear a beat or I hear verses that I like I just listen. Right? So sure, when sure, someone is searching sure. for you when someone's searching for you, how are they finding you? A lot of times I'm just being consumed. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. A lot of times just people sharing the music. Okay. Um, I hear a lot of times people that play my music because I make very inspirational records. Okay. Um, and very strategic projects. So like when we did Mr. and Mrs., it was a concept album. We were talking about love, which is really prime time right now with Valentine coming up. Um, right. It was an album dedicated to the union of marriage for Christ in the center. And okay. um, so that was the whole project. That was the entire album was, was very direct, very much about love, the, um, the evolution of a relationship from the concept of meeting someone, getting to know someone to getting married. Um, then also the next album that I'm working on, which is called Bell's Chapel, is a very different tone. Um, okay. I'm kind of taking it back to my gospel roots. So it has a very a very vintage gospel sound, if you will. Like, um, you know, when you think of church, like especially church in the South, you think of the organ, you think of those soulful bass lines and just that that to be able to feel God in the music. 
And um, but with the twist of activism inside of it, with the twist of talking about you know anti-religion and and kind of having just this really warm sound that feels good because we don't feel music anymore we just play it and we just turn it up loud and it's just noise i wanted to bring feeling back to music that's true that's true what would you say is one of your what would you say is one of your favorite songs out right now from other artists no yours what is one of your 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 songs that you would say is one of your favorite? Oh, that's a very odd question. These are all of my babies. I like all of them the same. <laughs> well, do you write do you write your own songs, or do you have do. someone that writes for you? Okay, okay. I write I write my own. Um, I would say I would say. Um, um, I don't know, cause I I love different songs for different reasons. Like I love love, which is okay. um, sung by KJ Staden, um, mm-hmm. because it, it's so inspirational. Um, it's so empowering. Um, but I love for you as well. Um, which is me performing for you, and um, I think you know what I really get into now. I get into the creation of the video treatments and okay. how we're going, like the videos that we're about to make to go along with these records. And I think that's like, that's now kind of my thing. Um, is how can we make these, these records come to life? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, when it comes to um, musicians who haven't inspired you, so before you got started, what are the musician the musicians who inspired you when it comes to music? Um, the usual suspects. Um, I was a, I was a big um, Roots fan. Um, yeah. Nina Simone. Like I I, I yeah. was a sponge. Like I used to yeah. listen to like records mm-hmm. and just feel music. You know, um, right. James Brown, of course. Um, Boogie Down Production, like, I'm all over the place. You're, you're um, showing your age, you know that, right? Well, I come from the age of hip hop. I'm, I'm an 80s baby. <laughs> 80s baby. Yes, yes. Oh, James Brown is a favorite of my mom's. You're talking about roots, so yeah, you're going way back, way back. Now, what about now? What are, What is a musician now that um that you like? Give me your your top two, male and female. Well, I like Cole. Okay. Um, and I'm really, you know, I I really like this new Kanye project. Okay. I like I like what he did with um, um which is what we what we've been doing, but mm-hmm. um, I think he, I, I like him for being brave, and mm-hmm. kind of. Not throwing it away, but taking chances. Okay. 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 Now I know that you support a lot of causes in the community. What are you what are you passionate about when it comes to causes that you support in the community? And how are you using your music to support those causes? Well, with the um this is something that I've just kind of thought of the last couple of days with Bell's Chapel. Being at Bell's Chapel is kind of an album of reflection. And um, I kind of, you know, and it's interesting because between the album Bell's Chapel being much about self care and mm-hmm. um, self awareness, and oddly enough, Alpha Men, like working with a lot of the barbers and a lot of the um, the people in that industry that is really pushing men also with self care and, and take care not only of your 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 look and your um outer appearance but also digging deep inside and kind of dealing with some of the stuff that is um internalized internalized so I really want to and I have a lot of therapists that are friends of mine so mm-hmm. I really want to 
kind of push that envelope. I want to um, talk to men as well as myself, really look at self-awareness and um, talking to therapists. And it's a lot of stuff that we deal with that we don't get checked out. We don't get checked out. Um, right. Like the idea that getting stopped by the cops more than a normal person has a wear on your, your psyche. You know, right. like it's not normal to keep getting harassed by cops or hearing gunshots or having to get down on the floor late night while you sleep. Like that's not normal life. That does play a role in your psyche and how you um look at life and you need to right. have those discussions and kind of learn how to heal from those so that we can have normal lives and, and show up for the people right. that we love as well as ourselves. Right. I really like that. Um, right now, my uh, organization, we're doing a Stomp City to City um, project where we're going to different cities to talk about um, domestic violence, sexual assault, um, sex trafficking, and some other causes that are all related. And um, one of the events that we're doing is in uh, March, March 7th, 7th, which I invited you to earlier. And the whole theme for that one is going to be um, that men can be victims of domestic violence too, and they can also be advocates for domestic violence. Um, the re reason why we decided to do this in March is because we really do need more men to show up, to speak out about domestic violence when it comes to men. Um, so I really think that the, the piece about you wanting to talk to more men, to talk about getting involved in the community is really important um, because we do need, we do need more men that are fighting causes out here, and not just us women, um, because these kind of things happen to you too. Men are victims of domestic violence. They might not speak up, but they are. Um, men are also victims of sexual assault. They're also victims of sex trafficking and human trafficking. But a lot of men don't speak up because they feel that it's going to have a, a negative effect on their ego and them as a man. Um, so it's really important that men are involved in the causes out here that are not just affecting women, but affecting families as well. So I'm really happy that you're going to be joining us on March 7th. I'm looking forward to that, definitely. Um, how do you feel about that? How do you feel, how do you feel about the movement of getting men involved in um, domestic violence advocacy? How do you feel about that? I think that I'm excited and I'm glad that you asked me to be a part of it. Um, that's something that actually I've been wanting to do for a couple of years now, be more active and speak up against um, domestic violence. Um, uh -huh. And I think that most alpha men would also agree that hitting women is what we do. Right. Um, it's, it's weak men that that uh, that beat up on women, and. Um, yeah. I'm almost certain that we will have a lot of alpha men that will come and also be a part of these type of events. Yeah. Um, I, I think that what we, we weaken ourselves when, or our, our, our communities, when we allow each other to fend for our own struggles. So I think as a man, I should come and be supportive of something with my sisters if that are in abusive relationships. And I, at the same, with that being said, I also think that women should be um, also supportive of men trying to find themselves and um, deal with their own personal struggles. If we learn how to deal with it as a community, that's how we can achieve um, both goals. Right, right, right. Um, I definitely agree with that. Um, it's really important when we say that we want men to support us when it comes to the causes that affect us, but it's equally important for us as women to support our kings with the issues that they face as well. Um, so I'm just going to ask you, what do you feel as a man is a big issue for men in the community that maybe we need to be more involved in? as women? I think um, 
if you have a son, if you have an uncle, if you have a father, if you have a husband or a boyfriend, that um, just being more sympathetic to their day-to-day struggle. Um, you know, if, if you're with a guy, if you're in a relationship, or if, if your son, think about what he had is coming after him when he walked on the other side of that door. He got police, he got gangs, he got black people, he got racism, he got, you know, at any point, he's the bad guy in any situation. Right. There's a struggle mentally, emotionally, and then think about all the times that that has happened that never leave you. It just kind of piles up on you. Being more supportive and more sensitive and understanding of what they deal with. Also encouraging them to get help, to get to seek therapy, to um, pray, to, to deal with what they're dealing with so that he can be strong enough to come back and be supportive to the household, to the family. And women go through the same thing, just in a different form. Um, mm-hmm. That's why I believe that we should work together. Um, heal together and work together to be supportive of each other. And I think the outcome will be different. It's, it, it brings a certain kind of healing to the family, to the household. Right, right. Yes, I definitely agree. Um, I have a son and I know that I've started to talk to him about um, the fact that no matter the color of his complexion, because he's pretty light, bright like me, <laughs> that when people see him, they still see him as a black boy. Um, there was a situation last year where there was a young lady that he was really good friends with. And I truly believe that um, once her parents found out that, she, that he was black, I think that that had a lot to do with the reason why they're no longer talking. I could be wrong, but that's how I feel because she was a, she was Caucasian um, and they were very close. And um, I really feel like that had a lot to do with it. And even if it didn't, it still opened up the discussions that needed to be had about, you know, race and the way people see race and the way people see black boys and black men. Um, And as a mom, that's kind of a hard conversation to have because I'm not a man. I can't, I can't relay those types of um, feelings that you might be able to. Um, But I was able to share with him with what male friends have told me, have shared with me and, you know, just the things that I witnessed myself. So I really think that's important that we talk to our, especially our boys and let them know, you know, what they're faced with um, as they grow up, because it's, it's not easy being a black boy um, or any minority boy, honestly, in this, this, the society that we live in. And um, so those are important conversations to have. I definitely agree with that. Definitely. It's it's funny. Later, I'm actually going to um, write a book called Black Boys Lost, and we're going to talk about a lot of those issues and also go on and speak into us and talk to young boys. You know, a lot of single parents out there is raising boys, and um, hopefully we'll be able to add some, some, some tips and some guidance to kind of help. Yeah, with that yeah. Process. Yeah, I think that would be good. I think that would be good. That's definitely something that I would love for you to connect with you about when you make that happen. Definitely want to interview you again. Um, I'm looking forward to catching one of your concerts or one of your um, one of your shows very, very soon. Do you have anything lined up that you can tell us about so I can put it on my calendar and make sure that I'm there? We are playing. Uh, the thing that I know definitely is um, the tour that we're working on. Mm-hmm. JT talking more about that. Um, but it's a 20 city tour starting in Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida. Right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, I'm, I'm going to do some stuff. I got to come to Charlotte. It's been a very long time since I've been in Charlotte. I'm going to bring okay. the band, I'm do background singers. I'm going to rock out, especially with this new album. 
Nice, nice, nice. I am definitely looking forward to it. You have a lot going on um, that is very positive. I listened to several um, songs of yours and I love them. So I'm really glad that we were able to finally connect and um, talk about your music and talk about what you're doing and talk about uh, Alpha. Alpha is doing a lot right now. It is blowing up. <laughs> um, and I am so proud of you. I know when you told me about it, I was like, great, this is going to be um, one thing I definitely was going to follow because I wanted to see the beards. <laughs> but it has blown up. It really has. And I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of your music. I'm proud of what you're doing. And I cannot wait to, to be in the audience to hear your music. Definitely. Thank you. Um, we do have a couple of brand ambassadors coming up. Um, we have some men for Alpha. We got some some more coming. Um, I think what we're gonna start doing is building this this. You know, I want this to be a movement. I want yeah. it to be more than just you know products for your face and for your hair. Like I want this. Mm -hmm. I want this to be something that can embody something. So we're gonna start creating. I was told not to call them chapters, but we're gonna have we're gonna have these different groups because we need to support each other. Um, so we'll be seeing a lot more moves coming. <laughs> yes. Well, we are gonna be there to see it. Um, definitely, let me know when your next show is so that we can get you on to talk about it. And I want to thank you for your time. We're going to bring JT on right now to talk to us about Big Woo and how I, how I met you and how we got connected and for him to just tell us, you know, everything that he's doing in the community. So if you will hold on, I'm going to bring him in so that we can talk to him. And then at the end, um, I just want to reconnect with, with both of you. Does that sound okay? Cool deal. All right. Um, I am waiting for James to come back on. And meanwhile, while we are waiting for him to come back on, can you tell us where to find you, how to find Alpha Men Care, and how to find you and your music? Um, you can definitely go to you can go to, um, J Lock, J O Y L C K E, or you can go to the Alpha Men's by J Lock group which i'm excited to um which is doing really good I'm, I'm excited and thank you for all the people that's part of it um or you can go to the alpha main care page and um talk to me directly or if okay. you're close if you're in one of the cities that carry it definitely go and stop in some of the stores and, nice yeah. nice you got to get your uh your products here in charlotte so you won't be so far okay. away okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you have CIAA coming up, man. You gotta, you gotta set up a table or something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I gotta go to Charlotte because it's such a huge market, and um, I expect you know, you know, one thing I know about Charlotte is everybody wants to look and smell good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we we got that. What the, what, the, what the young boys say, we got that drip for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess that's what they say. I don't know. I'm old. <laughs> don't apply too much of the serum, though. It will drip in real life, like moderation. <laughs> got it. Got it. Well, thank you so much. Um, stay on the line. I'm going to go ahead and bring JT on right now, um, but definitely stay on so we can talk to you again before before we end for the evening. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Peace. Bye. All right, guys. This is, again, we are talking to Jay Locke. He is a musician. He's also a business owner. Now we're going to bring on Mr. JT. JT was the one that actually introduced me to J Lock because I was looking for some fresh faces and some artists to feature here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So hello, JT. How are you? Good evening. Salute to everybody out there, the audience and Miss Tiffany. Appreciate the opportunity. 
Of course, of course. Um, I've had the opportunity of being on your show. Sorry, I keep taking my glasses off. I need to clean them. Um, I had the opportunity to be on your show about a year ago, I believe, when I was starting to promote the launch of my first book, Reality Check, um, and I got to meet you. And ever since then, you have been very supportive. You've been uplifting. You check in on me quite regularly. So I want to first say that I appreciate you for supporting me in my ventures and also with my, my mission to raise awareness about domestic violence and sexual assault. So thank you so much. Oh, without question, I, mean, I think the most beautiful thing we can do in this life is support one another. Um, and be encouraging. And when you see someone that's building something and doing things that are positive, um, not just in that area, but making an impact, I mean, it's only right that, you know, you you come aboard and do what you can to help, you know, with any way that you can. So, I mean, I see you doing beautiful things and you're reaching out. You got the free hugs. You got the Inspired <laughs> Series. I mean, you got, you know, a lot of beautiful things going on. So, you know, um, God has blessed you with a, with a beautiful movement and a journey. And, you know, it's, it's just it's great to watch and to see uh, an African-American lady just, you know, put herself, you know, the sacrifices and the hard work that people don't see, you know, to to know what that's like. It's like, you know, it's beautiful to watch. So tremendous job on what you've been doing and making the impact and continue to make footsteps here in 2020. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. And, yeah, we had you on the Floetic Show, and, and we had a ball with you, and we look forward to the next time that we have you on, you know, so we can, you know, promote what you got going on and um, continue to uplift that. Yes, yes. And I'm excited to also call you a Stomp City to City partner as of today. Um, we decided that you are going to join the movement to raise awareness in Chester, South Carolina. So tell us why Chester? Why did you, I don't think I've ever been there. Why did you choose Chester? Um, Chester is a place that is near and dear to my heart. First of all, it's my wife's hometown. And yeah. I've been able to travel down on several occasions and I've just observed certain things. And in observing it, it's like wherever you can spread your roots in order to get the message out to help people because people are hurting. People are going through things. People don't have avenues to to um, talk about what's going on, you know, with them. And so it only takes to me, it only takes a second to take the time out to reach out. And it's like our outreach, what you're doing with the stump movement. You know, those are the things that's going to open up those doors for people to feel comfortable. Like, you know what? I can talk about this or I can deal with this. Or I have an opportunity to try to, you know, deal and cope with what, I, you know, what I've been through. Um, or maybe somebody needs to hear my story in order to, you know, uh, have an impact, you know, on them or help them through what they're going through. So um, in bringing it to Chester, um, May the 16th, um, we're going to be, we're going to start a movement. I mean, uh, the Chester event center, which I happen to be director of operations of, we're going to, we're going to start there and we're going to, uh, you know, uh, meet and greet as many people as we can and, and talk, you know, talk on these subjects and just really bring awareness and, and just, you know, let, let people know that, that we're here and, you know, we'll have information for you, um, to what, you know, if you need something, if you need assistance, if you need counseling, whatever, but you also will be impacted by people that have been through it, that have walked in those shoes, that have, you know, things that they deal with on an everyday basis. So, you know, I look very, I look very much forward to it, uh, bringing that event to um, Chester, South Carolina, and, and look forward to, you know, our partnership and what we're doing, and, and to all the cities that, that, um, that we'll be traveling to each city is going to be impacted in a different way. Yes. Yes. Um, we are definitely setting up for a great 2020. Um, our first event is going to be in two weeks in Perry, Georgia, which is about an hour from Atlanta. And then after that, we are going to be going to, excuse me, we are going to be here in Charlotte for the men's movement, which I mentioned earlier on with uh, Jay Locke, where we're 
hoping to show the community that men can be victims of domestic violence, but they can also be advocates as well. That's something that us as ladies, as queens, have been asking our kings to do is to find movement. And so that is something that um, we are very excited about, is being in Charlotte on March 7th. And then after that, we are going to the DMV um, area, which is where I'm from. And then we're also going to, um, mm, sorry, Baltimore. Lost my train of thought there. And from there, we are going to Durham. We're going to Fayetteville. We're going to Chester. So we are going to various places. Hampton Roads, I forgot that one, that we're going to be there in July. So this is going to be a big deal. It's a big deal to go to these different cities and just hit the streets and talk about domestic violence, sexual assault, sex trafficking, just gun violence, suicide awareness. Those are all the things that we are, we're spreading awareness about in 2020 um, for the Stop City to City uh, project. Awesome. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. And I hope to add uh, Rocky or South Carolina to that, um, to that list as well. Like in all those cities and then some, you know, we hope to, you know, to get to and just really bring the movement. And, uh, you know, again, every, every step that we take counts. So we definitely are... Um, we're definitely in it, you know, definitely on it. Right, right. Um, I know, I think, Jay, Jay, were you trying to tell us something? Yeah, I think Jay had to, I think Jay had to step away. Um, yeah, so, oh, okay. Uh, that he, okay. That he's okay. dealing with, yeah. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't miss something from him. Um, okay, great. So, yes, Rock Hill has definitely been on my radar as well. So, we would love to add Rock Hill. I think that that would be a great addition because we are really on the the what is it north south east the east coast <laughs> we're going yeah, up and down yeah. the coast in 2020 um and so rock hill would be definitely a great addition we have a lot of advocates in the rock hill area so let's go ahead and throw that out there rock hill what you doing let's add you to the stop city to city project we would yeah, definitely you're love talking that to, you're, you're talking to one of them, one of the guys that can make that happen so you know, okay, we'll, good. we'll we'll put a, a, a date on it and, and we'll can continue the movement. Sounds great. Sounds great. Um, so now meeting you, I initially met you again from being on your show. So tell us about Big Woo. Tell us about it. How did it get started? What was what was the the, the vision? Well, it's the brainchild of uh, Mr. Corey Woods, aka Big Woo. Um, we met each mm -hmm. other about four and a half years ago. Um, in another in another establishment that we just happened to be in the same place at the same time, and um, you know he was setting up, and I went back to ask him if anything he needed, and just so happened uh, our other uh, co-host uh, Adonis Martin was running late, so I asked mm -hmm. him, I said, "Hey man, let me just jump on the you know let me jump on the air you know until my man get here, and mm -hmm. uh, just you know help hold it down, and right. from that like they say a beautiful partnership was." Um, was born and, and we are the co-founders of Big Woo Radio. Um, and we've added, we got a tremendous team now because you're talking about, you know, not just, you know, Adonis Martin, but we have Nima Shining Star L. We have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the goddess Nayana Renee. We have mm -hmm. JB, Mr. 299. We got Spacio Bigger. We have Kendra D. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that, that contribute to our shows. Um, Dr. Jared Fife. Uh, Big Les, so there are a lot. Um, also Lil Bucky, so there are a lot of you know. There's been a lot of growth to Big Woo Radio. Um, just last night we um we were running up at the uh, South Carolina uh, Underground Music Awards in Myrtle Beach uh, for our Brutally Honest show that comes on every Tuesday night at um 7 p.m. So we were extremely extremely proud of that because the fans were the ones that got us nominated and we had four nominees no i mean we had three nominations total um not just the bruliana show but also um you know Corey woods was was nominated for um male um host of the year and nayana renee was nominated for um female host of the year so we've been doing a lot of great things and through our platform you know, like the Flow Eddie Poetry Show, which airs every Friday at 6 p.m., you know, is, is how I came in contact with you. And, and having that platform for you to be able to come on and talk about your book or talk about, you know, the thing, the events that you have going on, it's the whole reasoning 
behind it. It wasn't anything selfish. It wasn't for, you know, to get glory or just, you know, and, you know, obtain stardom. It was really just, you know, God blessed us with that. And, and with that, we wanted to be a blessing to others. And I think on the better half of, you know, the last four and a half years, we, we have had a plethora of guests and we've been able to, you know, be in our communities and do things that, you know, we couldn't um, have ever dreamed of. And this, you know, this past year was the third time that we were nominated for a Queen City Award. Shout out to Kevin Glover. Yes, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Three years in a row. I mean, we've been, you know, nominated for Radio Show of the Year, the Floretic Poetry Show in Radio Station of the Year. And when you talk about the fact that we're internet-based and we all get up the big boys, but yet we're receiving right. nominations, that's mm -hmm. nothing but God. God has is, is truly been blessing our path. And so he we stay... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we stay humble on that. And, um, yeah. you know, that's what it is. Nice, nice. Um, I know that uh, when you asked me to be on the, the show for my book, um, I was like, who is this guy? Because <laughs> I, was, I was seeing you, and we, we have a, a huge network that we share. Yeah. Um, and I'm very grateful for you. Um, I'm about to relaunch Reality Check because I have written the second and third book in the Reality Check series that I'm about to release. So we're relaunching Reality Check um, within, hopefully within the next three weeks. So it was definitely a blessing to you and definitely a blessing to have you on our show. Um, what are some causes in the community that you're passionate about? Big thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I'm working with T. Nicole Enterprises out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Shout out to Tony Nicole. We are partnering. We are partnering up with New Mount Oliver and Zion Church here in Rock Hill, and we're going to do a uh, Clothe the Streets with Love uh, outreach event on March the 21st um, at New Mount Oliver and outside, where we're going to um, we're taking donations um, for clothing. Um, shoes. Um, also, we're, we're, we're taking donations for school supplies, things of that nature. Um, so it's it's been um, it, it's a blessing to be able to do that and give back. And we also, have, you know, have the United Way that's coming out. And it's just, okay. you know, one of those things that we have an opportunity to, you know, we have an opportunity to do this. And, and it's been a blessing. Um, you know, Tony and Nicole, we've been working together the better part of the last, you know, two to three years. And to have an opportunity to reach back into your community and pour back in. And we're and we, and we inviting families to come out that may be in need. And, and, and you know, we're going we're gonna to have some groceries and we're going to provide a hot meal. And, and also some entertainment as well. Um, just so you understand that we're doing, we're doing something different. Um, we're not, it's not just going to be your regular, ordinary event. So anybody that's able to attend and be there, you, you're being a part of something special. And it'll be, they've been doing, you know, we've been doing it um, since 2015. So this, this will be the, the biggest event, you know, yet. Good, good. And you said that's on March 21st, right? March 21st, um, starting at 10 a.m. We'll be at okay. New Mount Olivet and Zion Church um, in Rock Hill, South Carolina. And okay. looking forward to that. Okay. Yes, I think I need to look at my calendar because you asked me about an event earlier and I had something going on, but that sounds like um, an event that we definitely want to be at and cover. We do, we cover a lot of live events. The last um, event that we covered live was with Hank Bilal. And okay. um, if I haven't introduced you to him or if you don't know who he is, I definitely want to connect you with him. He is yeah. a, um, yeah. he's an artist, saxophonist, great musician um so i definitely want to connect you with him if you don't already know who he is but i know you know everybody so you sure you know him <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yes uh so i have some questions let's see so miss nima she asked about philadelphia so miss nima we would love to get to philadelphia um, I'm from D.C. Uh, we were trying to get an event for the Stomp City to City in uh, New York City. It didn't happen, unfortunately. My contact there now lives in Charlotte. So we weren't able to get that. But Philadelphia would definitely be a plus. Um, so if you want to contact me, please contact me. You can uh, contact Jay and he can get you in contact with me 
um, directly. We would love to come to Philadelphia for the Stomp City to City. Uh, Philadelphia would be an awesome place to go for this. Um, again, I've been to Philly. I love Philly. And we would love to add that to our project, definitely. So Ms. Nia, please, please reach out to me so that we can talk about that. Um, uh, JT has joined us. He he knows the movement. He knows the cause. He knows the mission that I'm on. Um, again, he's been supporting me for a couple of years now. So we would definitely, definitely love to add Philly um, there, definitely. Um, I, and I know Miss Tony. Tony is actually my manager. She is helping me with uh, relaunching my book and also putting out my um, my clothing line that I started to put out last year, but it was a little slow. So she's helping me put it out this year. So hello to Miss Tony. I just tagged her so that she knows that we're talking about her. She's probably got a little twitch in her ear right now. <laughs> so tell us what else. What else do you have going on? You have Big Woo. You have your uh, your your community events that you're doing. What else? Tell us. Tell us. Well, I what do, else is going on with, you? with the Elite Gents? Um, which I'm vice president of that organization. I do the Elite Gents podcast, um, which you know, random interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews with you know authors, artists, you know, everyday people. Um, I just got the episode 54 on that one. Um, so I'm very proud, you know, of that um, to be 54 episodes in. Um, got a lot of, wow. got to get you on there with me um, to talk about, you know, what I'm saying the stomp movement and and the relaunch of the books. Um, so that's near um, and dear to my heart. Um, Garland McFarlane is the uh, the president of that group, and you know, we we just you know finding ways to try to reach back to um, the young men, try to pour yes. back into you know our young people, the next generation. So. They're looking at ways to have an impact as far as that. And, and, and those, you know, also, you know, the Hydrocephalus Association, I'm, I'm an ambassador uh, for them because, you know, I live, you know, I, I live with um, a shunt installed in my brain, you know, from, you know, when I had surgery at age 14. So, oh, you know, wow. uh, man, yeah, man, a lot of people don't know, but it's part of my testimony. Um, <laughs> Um, Goodness. Okay. I, I need I need you to tell us about this. Why why what happened at fourteen? Well, what happened was I was born with a you know um, a rare rare birth defect, and it wasn't detected until I was fourteen. So oh, wow. when they when and it wasn't detected until I started having uh, symptoms. I mean, meaning that uh, I lost my vision for a period of time, and I had no no steady gait. So it happened to me one night after a band trip. And I had to be rushed to the hospital. I went from Rock Hill to Columbia to finally Charlotte, North Carolina, at the good people at uh, CMC, which is probably Atrium Healthcare now. Um, mm -hmm. They examined me. We did an MRI and a CT scan, and they, and they discovered it. And, you know, I endured a nine-and-a-half-hour sur brain surgery to, you know, to alleviate what was going on. And, see, there's no cure for that. So the only the only thing that can be done is in, into a starless shunt. And I was told that at fourteen, you know, sir, you 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 may live to be sixteen. And I, you know, this is where I developed my relationship with God because, you know, at that moment I leaned and I learned and I accepted Christ into my life. And I can tell you I will be knocking on the door on my forty fourth birthday in May. God yeah. has the God has the final say. So when you talk about faith, when you talk about strength, when you talk about a testimony, you know, I tell anybody, if you just lean on God, God will, you know, God will show you the way. And so that, that, that is at the path of everything that I do. You know, all these doors have been open because of the good Lord and it didn't have to be, but God had a purpose for my life and I don't shy away from that. You know, I praise him. I love him. You know, I understand that no matter what struggles, what obstacles come, all I got to do is a faith of mustard seed and understanding that God got me, you know, 100% and even more. And and I would tell anybody that if you're ever going through anything, no matter what, you know what I'm saying, God wants you to lean on him and he, he will not forsake you. I guarantee you, man will leave you hanging, but yes. God will never, ever, ever leave you hanging. Trust and believe when I tell you that. Wow. 
Yes. Um, I know that I was having a, a rough patch um, last year and um, and I'll be very transparent. Um, I got really, really depressed. And that's something that I've, I've dealt with for since I was probably 15, 16 years old. And I remember you checking in on me and just le- telling me that God has me to lean on God, to, to pray about it. Um, and I honestly feel that... Um, your check-ins with me really, really, really helps because I actually think I stopped praying for a couple of years because of, the, you know, just various things in my life that had happened. Um, and you, you helped me start praying again. So I don't think I told you that, but I'm going to tell you that now, um, that you got me to, to praying more. Um, I did start praying, but I wasn't praying frequently. And you just checking in and, and reminding me to pray and to keep, you know, relying on God and pray about it and just, you know, lean on those that are there to support me and are true in their support, which is very important. Um, definitely, definitely helped me. So, man, I, I've just learned something about you tonight that I didn't know. <laughs> Yeah. And probably yeah. a lot of other people didn't know. So that is a blessing, and you are a blessing. Definitely, definitely. It's, Tell humbling. Us yeah. it's humbling to hear you say that um, prayer is one of the most forgotten things that we have right here that exists within us. And, and sometimes mm-hmm. it does take encouragement and somebody to say, hey, you know what? Uh, are you having a good day? Or is everything okay? Um, uh, not just, hey, what can I get from you? But was your day okay? You know, uh, right. how, you know, how was it? Cause you know, no day is perfect. You know what I'm saying? Every day is not peaches and cream. So, you know, uh, and, and I stay praying, you stay praying for people, even people that might cross you the wrong way. You know what? It's okay. Cause you might be going through something that nobody else knows anything about. So I'll just keep you in prayer, you know, yeah. and, and it's, it's amazing. You pray for somebody. That's one of the most powerful things that you can do in this life. Is to you know what hold somebody in prayer and be like you know what it's okay because I'm gonna ask God to cover you and 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 nothing but peace and blessings upon your life. Right, right, right. Okay, you're gonna get me crying over here, thinking we don't want to cry tonight. <laughs> All right, so tell us what do you have in the makings right now? What can we look look forward to? You have any events? Well, otherwise, on March 21st. Um, which I want you to tell us again when we end, before we end. Okay. But what else do you have going on? Well, we're working on something very special for the summer. I can't reveal everything, but you wanted to know when the next time okay. you're going to get the CJ Lock. I mean, okay. we're going yes. we're going on a uh, on a tour in summer uh, called the 2020 the Floating World 2020 uh, tour, which I'm doing with my guy in uh, VA, uh, Nick is always. Um, okay. And we're going to take, you know, some independent artists, uh, uh, Stella Award nominee, Reggie Rock, uh, also Mr. Dark Eye, and also J-Lock will be joining us on some of the t- tour dates. Also, um, Radia, better known as Stars Pen. Um, oh, yes, I know her. <laughs> she's going to be she's going to be hosting some of our, you know, events um, as well. So okay. we got promotional stuff coming out um, within the next um two months are going to drop and tell everybody everything that they need to know. Um, and we're going, we're going to 20 plus cities in 30 days when we're covering five wow. states the whole month of June. So when I tell wow. you it's going to be something special, when we, <laughs> yes. when, we, when we roll the promo out on this, trust and believe uh-huh. you're going to want to get your tickets. You're going to want to be a part of it. We are coming okay. to the queen city. We are. Queen okay. City is one of the stops. Um, and we've been blessed because we're, we're, you know, the tour sponsors right now are um, Red Bull, um, Golden Corral. Right. Um, the Connected is also one of the major uh, sponsors and also right. Hilton Inn and Suites. So we have four major sponsors of the tour right now. Um, my man Zane Neal just released the album um, this past oh Friday, um, which is doing very well. It's called... Um, up late but not thinking about you you can get it on all your digital uh media platforms <laughs> up late but not thinking about yes. you <laughs> my, when i tell you i'm gonna have to look, you're gonna have to look it up it's on all, i'm gonna have to look for all that. platforms when i tell you it's an amazing <laughs> album and we got a whole lot of people okay. that have, have got the album so far but he he's a young cat okay. this got some some a, a beautiful album 
and and you, okay. you can't miss it when you look it up. You're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna get it. Trust and believe that. Oh, I'm, I'm about to look that up right now. <laughs> Just the title alone makes me wanna makes yeah. me wanna look it up. That yeah. is exciting. That I'm thirty excited. cities in you said thirty cities in thirty days. Is we're going we're going to twenty two cities. Twenty two cities. Five states in five thirty states. days. In thirty whole, days. Got it. Whole month of June, we're going on tour. Wow. Yes. Wow. And and J Lock is gonna be on that tour with you. J Lock is one of the artists that will be um uh, featured on that tour. Um we have some amazing artists, we got some amazing special guests that, that we're gonna reveal when we roll out the promotion. But you know, Jay, Reggie, Mr. Dark Eye, um, Stars Pen, uh Zane, Zane Neal, those guys, those guys will be on tour. You can get their music, you can get their merchandise, because all of them got merchandise. When I tell you okay. it's going to be the best and most historic tour of all independent artists and all independent, no labels involved, it's all independent. And we've been blessed yeah. with sponsorship. So when we roll it out, I expect, I expect to see everybody here. Okay. All right. I love it. That's exciting. That is exciting. And you mentioned Miss Radia. Miss Radia is actually one of our stock partners. We're going to be doing um, Fayetteville with her. Um, so I know her and um, she's a phenomenal woman. Um, I also want to connect you with Karish. I don't know if you know Karish. Do you know her? I don't. Uh, look forward to the okay. connection. She's an independent artist and she is up and coming. So I definitely will connect you with her um, either tonight or tomorrow. I think that she would definitely be a good addition, if not to the tour, but definitely for an interview, if nothing else. Um, she is, she's amazing. Um, she's sexy. She's a survivor. She's outspoken. Um, so I think you'll, you'll definitely like her. So I will definitely um, connect you to as well. And make sure that all the people that you mentioned just now, if you can tag them in the in the video comments so they can know that you did a shout out for them, I would definitely appreciate that. And I'll also try to connect with them too and see if we can get them here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. That would be definitely. great. Thank definitely. you. Thank you. Well we have run over time. So tell us how can we find Mr. JT Thompson? How can we find you and all that you're doing? Well, on Facebook, it's simple. Uh, the government name, James Sherman Thompson. You can find me on Facebook. On IG, it's JT underscore Big Woo Radio. Um, and Twitter, I'm on Twitter, but, mm -hmm. I, you know what I'm saying? I have a Twitter, but I can't tell you the Twitter handle because I'm not on Twitter like <laughs> okay. that. So I okay. just, just kind of randomly go on Twitter. But IG and Facebook is the, is the main ones. And then, you know, the okay. email is simple, JT at Big Woo Radio. Dot com um for all the things that that I have going on or I'm working on it's the best way you know to um to reach me and to keeping up with the social media um handles is the best way to keep up with everything that is going on whether it's your event whether it's you know stars event or anything that we got going on that's where you right. want you want to stay tuned because it's the reason why social media exists Right, right, right. Yes. Well, I want you to tell us about the March 21st um, event again before we leave. Tina Crow Enterprises um, proudly partners with New Mount Olivet and Zion Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We will be there on location um, providing clothing, food, a hot meal, just haircuts, um, whatever we can roll out between now and March the 21st. They can be donated. We will be there that morning um, just trying to outreach to um, our, our homeless society and also any family that's in need. We encourage you to come out. Um, this will not be one of your regular, ordinary events because that's not what we do at T. Nicole Enterprises. Trust and believe you want to be a part of this. Anybody that wants to volunteer, anybody that wants to come out and help, um, just reach out. You know what I'm saying? JT at Big Woo Radio dot com or hit myself or Tony Nicole up on our Facebook pages and we can give you more information on how to come and be a part of this event. But when I tell you outreach is one of the most truest blessings that that we can that we can do in this life to be able to help your fellow man, you know, because we've all been in that in that time where we needed a little helping hand. And on mm -hmm. March the twenty first, uh we take steps to make that happen. So you know, I understand pride and I understand, you know what I'm saying, how that goes. But 
you can come and you can be assured that this is a family. This is a family thing. We are family. We don't see no strangers. And so when we see you on March the 21st, we are family and we are bonded and we will unite. Yes. Yes. Well, that is an, a great and inspirational um, ending to our interview. I want to thank you so much, Mr. JT. Um, you have been inspirational to me, but I also appreciate you being supportive of Butterfly Visions Project and all that we do with domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, I'm looking forward to our partnership for the Stomp City to City project that we are doing. And it is um, great that you are doing a lot in the community to give back. I think a lot of people, when they start their businesses, they kind of forget where they come from. And it's it's inspirational. And one of the reasons why we started the Speak Up and Inspire series podcast is so that we can highlight the people like you and me, like our neighbors, who are doing things in the community that not too many people might know of or doesn't get recognized. And so we want to recognize you for what you do in the community, just like what Jay is doing in the community with his music and with um, Alpha Men Care. He is blowing up right now, and I am so proud of him. Um, I need to look at his products. Those are going to be amazing Christmas gifts for 2020 and whatever gifts for 2020 for any woman out there for her man but also for the men themselves to take care of their beards take care of their hair hair those waves and all that good stuff <laughs> so i'm very, very proud of him um, i'm very proud of you you and thank you again for your support not just of my of the speak up and inspire series but in bbp but also me as well i really really appreciated you being there as a friend when I needed a friend um, last year. So thank you very much. Um, this is the Speak Up and Inspire series and we are going to close out. If you would like to get in contact with these men, you can reach them on their Facebook page. And he said, you can reach him on his government. So that is James Sherman Thompson and also Jay Locke. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram. These are two amazing men. And I am so happy to finally get them here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. And thank you so much, guys, for supporting me and my mission in the community and also my business ventures as well. Everyone, thank you. Please share and like our Facebook page at the Speak Up and Inspire series. We interview amazing, inspirational, phenomenal, awesome people on our podcast who are doing great things in the community. They're not just business owners. They're not just advocates. They are not just um, you know the next name that you're gonna see in a magazine or something like that. We are interviewing people like me, like JT, like Jay Locke, like your neighbor next door who are doing amazing things to inspire others to do amazing things in their community. So thank you everyone for being with us. We ran over a little bit, but we're talking about great stuff, right? Thank you so much. Y'all have a good night.